So let me read you another piece of scripture. This, um, this from the letter to the Hebrews, which was written near the end of the first century, probably 85, 90 AD, somewhere in there. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, Noah, warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning and built an ark. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, Isaac invoked blessings for the future. On Jacob and Esau, I'm just going to keep fast-forwarding, blessed each of the sons of Joseph by faith, Moses. And what more should I say? For a time would... For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions. Remember Daniel in the lion's den? There it is. Quenched raging fire, therefore since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. I went fast through that because I'm coming back to it and unpacking a little bit. But let me uh, take you back 15 minutes. Adam gave us a great visual image, the pieces of the puzzle, the parts of the body that make up a healthy functioning church. This Hebrew scripture gives us another perspective, a, another good picture, a long line, a progression, a chain, person upon person, generation after generation, moving forward, passing forward. Just listen again, really quickly. By faith, our ancestors received approval. Noah built an ark. Abraham obeyed when he was called. Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. Moses was hidden. Moses in the bulrushes. I didn't read that, but it's there. Moses left Egypt. The people passed through the Red Sea. What more should I say? Time would fail me. Gideon, Samson, David, Samuel. It's a great list. And it was written, as I said, about close to the end of the first century B.C., 1900 years ago, roughly. And, of course, it refers to several thousands. So do a timeline. It's written here. And there's been 1,900 years past since us. I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? Yeah. I got it, Bassack. Well, you get the drift. It's written here. Um, Moses, Noah are back here. So thousands of years have passed. And now another 1,900, and here's us. All through, all across that timeline, generation upon generation, person upon person, the faith passed on. Let me tell you a few more, some of whom you might recognize. Ab Bradley. Just quick, how many of you remember Ab? Oh, good, a number, of, yeah. Ab Bradley was the chair of the board here um, when I first came here 22 years ago. And I remember this really well because I was scared and Ab took me out to lunch at Napoleon's. Yeah. I, I'm looking, usually, normally, I'm looking for coupons for McDonald's or Harvey's or something. He takes me to Napoleon's for lunch to welcome me and help me feel uh, belonging, accepted. Ab had been an engineer up in Peterborough area. He and Stella married, and eventually they ended up down here. He left engineering, and he, when he was working uh, with this church, he was selling real estate in the mountainside area, and he really cared for the people, just focused in that area. He was a, an engineer. He was careful, thoughtful, methodical. Ab Bradley. Let me show you another one. Sally Ferguson. Sally lived about 100 yards down Caroline here in a house there, and eventually she lost her husband, Sam, before I got here. I knew Sally, I didn't know Sam. But I've been talking to people this week and somebody said, Sally was such a gem. She was so much fun. She just made us all laugh. And here's the thing, she was a crackerjack leader, visionary organizer. 
she was the head of the hospital board, Joseph Brandt Hospital Board. So she wasn't ju just a jokester. And she made, for me, she made life a ton of fun around here. Eventually, she ended up, sold a house and ended up uh, in a, one of the apartment buildings across from the hospital. And she just continued to serve. Gord and Mary Kirby, next one. They lived in the little house just on the other side of the fence there. And Gord served, uh, he was a visiting elder, he was on the ministry and personnel team. Eventually, he lost Mary, and he got pretty frail, sold that house, and moved and lived his last years over at, a over at Appleby Place. What I really remember is I'd go visit him, and he would loan me books so that uh, Gord slipped away really fast. We weren't expecting it. Uh, I think he died in his sleep. But I had a Bobby Orr biography that he had loaned me. And I went to his son and said, I got to give this back to you. It, I didn't get it finished, but and the son said, Dad would want you to have it. I have the Bobby Orr biography sitting on my shelf in there that, that Gord gave me. Um, next, Grace Witzel. She sang in the choir over here, fantastic soloist, I'm told, uh, when she was younger. Her husband had been a minister. And if you look out on that uh, board of all the ministers out on the wall, uh, John Witzel is out there. And her husband had served here. So Grace never got involved in any of the governing boards or committees or uh, any of that stuff. She just stayed neutral. She sang in the choir and she worked hard in the UCW. And what she really did was she prayed. Somebody told me, somebody who was also in the choir, that in the couple years before uh, Drew Maxwell and I got here, Grace uh, would keep reassuring the search committee and she would say, don't worry, God has a plan for us. Don't get discouraged. The right person will come keep looking. That's direct verbatim quote. Grace just believed by faith and trusted and just kept praying. Last one, Joan Dunlop, also a minister's widow. Very kind, gentle, very positive. I loved go visiting her. She lived in the high rise just kind of behind where Burlington Camera is, off Guelph Line there. Very easy, gentle, sweet soul. And her husband had been a minister too. Joan and Grace and a little team just prayed all the time. We have a prayer team now. I often point you over them. Penny, they're all over the place here. Praying for this church, and that's a huge part. Time, let me read you that verse from Hebrews again. Time does not permit me to speak of. Remember? And he went into Samson, David, and... Uh, I'm going to steal the verse and say, time does not permit me to speak of Lennon, Pat West, Betty Park, Duncan and Isabel Drummond, Herma Bailey, Spence, Sutherland, Theobald, Sitkowski, Rayworth, Pickles, Oliver, and Nelson. Now listen again. Boy, I can hardly do this. Listen, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us run with perseverance. The race that is set before us, looking to Jesus. <clears throat> I did all their funerals, and I thank God for them, for what they did in my years here, and what they did long before I got here. We celebrate the links in the chain we give thanks for them, the great cloud of witnesses, and we acknowledge the possibilities for us. That's the first thing I want to say. The second one's shorter. Do you know what it was those folks, now gone, really did? They made choices, and they stretched the boundaries. They made choices that took this church into completely new territory, and you're sitting in it. And, and you're experiencing it every week. They were open to adventure. So now we do have two services. One of them, this one, by most United Church norms, is a little bit strange or different. I'm not saying you're weird, but I'm saying if you went to most... 
If you went to most United Churches, you wouldn't get a service like this. And that gang that was on screen, they gave the green light. And they gave a lot more to make all this happen. What else? We, the choices that were made invested bountifully in staff programming for children and for youth and spent closing in now on about three million on these facilities and when you count roofs and everything and air conditioning last summer yada yada and what else choices other choices they make they embarked on some serious stretching into outreach and caring actions both locally and offshore and you know the list we've been choosing to do more and do differently just over the edge from the routine norm just beyond the boundaries of playing it safe to main to just maintain the status quo we've chosen to constantly look for the new god adventure the growing edge so the third thing i want to do on our 54th anniversary is i want to daydream faith forward a wee bit we remember and rejoice in the past, we celebrate the present and all that's going on, and we brainstorm into the future. This is called spitballing, throwing ideas at the wall and seeing what sticks. The spiritual truth is, and Adam alluded to this, it's asking God, what's next? I don't know if you heard it, but I heard Adam say, what's next? Bingo, exactly right. I've got three ideas you're going to have a lot more but let me throw my three against the wall and hopefully they'll trigger some of yours a adult spiritual questing and here i'm talking about continuing to make this church a place where people can come and ask spiritual questions and explore the complicated mysteries of faith particularly and especially christian faith centered in jesus this might be one of the most vital services we can provide for people in our city a safe place for everyone whatever their background even and especially those who have been hurt by religion who have been burned or bored and those who are seeking truth renewal healing and direction for their lives a couple of years ago Jane Fonda actress activist she was questioned, interviewed by Rolling Stone magazine, has nothing to do with Mick Jagger. Rolling Stone magazine is a major music and entertainment uh, magazine. And the interviewer didn't really ask her question. He, he threw a statement at her. Listen, how he worded it. He said, uh, Ms. Vondi, your most recent and perhaps most dramatic transformation is your becoming a Christian. Even with your flair for controversy, that's pretty explosive. The unstated implication is, why would anybody become a Christian? And that's a question lots of people have, educated, reasonable people, who find becoming a, a Christian an explosive, almost inconceivable thing to do. In her response, Jane Fonda spoke of being drawn toward faith because... I could feel reverence humming within me. Whew. Reverence humming in me. I love that phrase. It speaks to the experiences so many of us have had, moments and glimpses when we found ourselves deeply aware of something more in life, the something else in life. So many people today are spiritually curious. They've been told religion is dead or it's silly, but they know deep inside there's something hums within them telling them it's not dead or silly. Wellington Square, I think, can continue to be a church where everyone can come on their spiritual quest. When, wherever they're at, whatever their level of curiosity, 
I love that we already have such an impressive lineup of groups and programs to study, to learn, to be safe and belong, even before one is sure about everything one believes. We belong first, and then we work out what we believe together. I like that. Some of my most satisfying times have been those study groups. A Thursday evening discussion group on The Shack blew me away, that novel. And I think it did for a lot of us. Or a Lenten series on bullseye, aiming to follow Jesus. Or Philip Yancey on prayer. All of those, the ideas we've traded, the things we've taught and discussed, let's make that the regular DNA of this place. What else might work around here? Second in my to-do list would be young adults, millennials. As technology increases and jobs are transient, most people between 18 and 35 have grown into a world that is significantly different. Different patterns and different expectations. Uh, I didn't know all that Adam was going to say and I was really intrigued when he talked about puzzles and putting... He said, I'm not a puzzle guy. I've grown up more on a screen. Exactly right. Take a look at this cartoon. Whoa. Yeah? Everybody read the punchline? The malt shop closed a long time ago, Archie. Uh, the teenager is streaming a movie with his girlfriend and they're texting each other as they're watching the movie. That's the, just an example. Might that not imply that faith will need to be communicated differently and questions and felt needs might not be the same for millennials as they were for boomers? and busters. I'm really pleased. We're already partnering in a new project. Adam's part of this. He's linking with Rhonda, Rhonda El Gersma, and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the church in St. Jacob's and a couple of others. And they're working to develop ministry and spiritual practices among millennials, 18 to 35-year-olds. If I were a minister here for the next 10 years instead of just 10 months, I'd pay a lot of attention to this and invest in really connecting, serving, inspiring, building up the faith of millennials. All right, my last spitball onto the wall uh, to do, reach out to serve. This is a growing edge that we're doing and I believe can continue. The Friday night community in the last year has added an afternoon program called The Hub and really helpful monthly sessions on mental health issues. I'd suggest it's really a, an all-day Friday community, not just Friday night, and much more. And it can continue to evolve and expand for the benefit of many. You heard a lot about that last week. Great service. I watched stuff online. Uh, let me go on with uh, reaching out to serve. Think about this. There are 5 million people trapped in refugee camps around the world. Every month, every month we hear about families drowning in the Mediterranean as they try to escape drought and war-ravaged Africa. And we hear about Muslims being ethnically cleansed out of Myanmar and the Syrian war victims. And, and, and. Might we be ready? to help rescue another family and bring them from the hell they're trapped in and into the hope and possibility of Canada. Just ask them. Furthermore, we can reach out to serve close to home too. It doesn't have to be all offshore. In the last year, a little program towards seniors in nursing homes has been started. I think it's brilliant. And maybe that can be developed right here in town. Maybe we could make it a goal to build a team of volunteers to serve faith needs in the residences and retirement villages that are being built. We've got a lot of our folks who can't get to church anymore, but they're up at 
Tansley Village, they're over at Appleby, all, they're all over the city. Worth talking about, don't you think? So, that's me brainstorming and spitballing about future directions, but my to-do list needs a lot of work, and it's pretty preliminary. Much better to do congregation-wide visioning. And later this month, we will. And just before we go, Jeremy will tell us a little bit about that. Uh, Jeremy from the board. But today, on our anniversary Sunday, we remember the chain of people, the great cloud of witnesses, and we feel gratitude. We celebrate the choice to do more than just maintenance ministry, to move over the boundaries, past just the norm. And we look ahead, seek God's guiding spirit, and we ask, what's next? I got to tell you, it's going to be good. What's next? I might have seen your future leadership last week. I, I'm not sure who, but I was at a conference of younger United Church ministers. I get in because uh, my daughter sang in the band and uh, a lot of her friends are merciful and they let me in. But I was at this conference of younger, mostly younger United Church ministers. I was so impressed. I wanted to run around to about a dozen of them and say, hey, you could come to Wellington Square. You could serve in Burlington. I'll get out of the way so you can be part of this great group of Jesus servants who are already on this adventure together. Yes. This spring, this summer, this fall, it's happening. New vision, fresh opportunities, God's work surging forward. Amen. All right. And I think... Are you ready to sing, or can I pray? I'm, I'm so ready. Go for it. Do it. I can pray? Do some praying. Okay. Holy One, amazing the chain, generation upon century, upon millennia. Amazing the people of the puzzle and the pieces of the puzzle that Jesus can fit and does build into a beautiful community, the church. It is amazing. And we invite you, in the power of your Holy Spirit, to continue to work on us and in us and through us. Amen.